Java's optional class was introduced in 2014 to allow developers to express the empty state. But what exactly does that mean, and why is it important enough for us to even bother using optional? In this video, you'll learn everything you need to know about optional, how it works, what problems it's helped solve, and importantly, when not to use it. Let's get right into it. Optional is simply a Java class located in the java.util package and available within the Java Development Kit, the JDK. That means we can use it anywhere in our Java code simply by creating an instance of that class. But before we do that, it's helpful to understand that optional is simply a container for an object. And just like real life containers, it can have one of two states. It contains an item, also known as present, or it doesn't contain an item, also known as empty. Let's take my glasses case, for example, Right now, it's empty, it doesn't contain an item, and now it does contain an item, it's present. So, just like optional, my glasses case can have one of two states. Haha, <laughs> yeah, I know, no glasses, very funny. In Java, we create an optional with a specific state. At the point of creation, we either give it an object, or don't give it an object. Here's how to create an optional which contains an object. And creating an optional which doesn't contain an object is even simpler. And by the way, when we create an optional, we create it of a specific type. Here the type is glasses, and you'll see later how this becomes useful when we start accessing the object inside the optional. Okay, so at this point you might be thinking, what's the point? To truly answer that, we have to travel back in time to see how things were done before optional even existed. Here I am in 2013, and I'm happily coding away on Java 7. Oh, bless. I'm coding a REST API which exposes the world's greatest guitarists. Right now, I need to create a Java method which searches by the guitarist's last name. I add this method to the guitarist service class. Right now, it only supports a single guitarist, the infamous Jimi Hendrix. It looks up the guitarist by name and returns it if found. But what if the guitarist doesn't exist? In this scenario, back then I thought the best thing to do would be to return null. Whoever's writing the code that calls this method will surely understand that null means no value, right? Let's look at it from the perspective of the code that calls find by last name. That's the getGuitarist method which directly handles the API call. Whoever implemented the method didn't think about the scenario where no guitarist is found. In that case, the method returns null, and whoever's calling the REST API gets an empty response body. We could of course add a null check to return a 404 not found response, but there's nothing that forces our hand to handle this scenario. As developers, our poor brains have to remember to do this every time. Even worse would be if we had to access some field on the guitarist object, since the guitarist is null, Java throws a null pointer exception, and whoever is calling our REST API gets a nasty 500 error. The problem is that in Java 7, there's no easy way to tell the caller of the method that the guitarist doesn't exist. Returning null is not explicit. It could mean that the guitarist doesn't exist, but it could also signify some other unexpected problem. Fortunately, Java 8 offers a solution to resolve all these issues, all neatly packaged in a new class called, you guessed it, optional. And back to the present day. Now let's look at how to use optional to better handle returning a potential empty value from a method. Going back to the find by last name method, here's how we use optional to either return the Jimi Hendrix guitarist or return empty. There are three main points to note here. First, the method returns an optional of type guitarist. Second, if last name is Hendrix, we construct a guitarist object and pass it to optional.of. This creates an optional containing the guitarist, which we return from the method. Third, if last name is anything else, we return optional.empty. This creates an empty optional, which will force whoever is calling the method to handle the guitarist not found scenario, as you'll see shortly. So our method now returns an optional which will either contain Jimi Hendrix or nothing. Groovy. But how do we actually use the returned optional and access the value contained within? Fortunately, to handle an optional returned by a method, 
Java offers a rich API to access the value contained within the optional, if present, and process it in some way, or to do something else if the optional is empty. All this is done in a safe way, avoiding any chance of a null pointer exception, and it's less verbose than if we were using null. Let's try out some examples calling the findByLastName method. Let's call the method passing Hendrix to try to retrieve the Hendrix guitarist. From this perspective though, we don't know whether the returned optional will contain Hendrix or nothing at all, but we do know there's a chance of either happening. Here's how we can handle the scenario where the guitarist is present using the ifPresent method. It takes a consumer function passed as a lambda expression. The function gets executed if the optional contains a value. That's perfect for when we want to handle the value in some way, and we don't even have to use an if statement. When we execute this code, it prints out purple haze. Note how the consumer function accepts a guitarist and then prints out the result of get signature song. It's thanks to the fact that the optional was created of type guitarist that we can access methods from guitarist in this way. So what about handling the case where the optional is empty? Well, there are various ways to do this. One way though is to execute another function if present or else. Like if present, it takes a function which is executed when the optional has a value, but it also takes a second function which gets executed when the optional is empty. When we execute this code, it prints out guitarist not found. We've deliberately requested a guitarist that doesn't exist, so if present or else, we'll automatically call the second function. Pretty cool. What if we want to substitute a default value in the case where find by last name returns an empty optional? That's simple using or else, which either returns the value inside the optional if present, or substitutes the provided value if empty. When we execute this code, it prints out the A-team. We're calling or else directly on the optional returned by find by last name. Since the optional is empty, this method is clever enough in this case to return default guitarist. Now that you've seen a few use cases using optional, let's go back to the original bad code which handles the REST API request. We can update it to handle the empty value by throwing an exception using the or else throw method. We just need to pass a supplier function to return the exception. This means that when we request an unknown guitarist, we get the appropriate 404 not found response. But the code is now less prone to the introduction of null pointer exception, and it's also less verbose. At this point, hopefully you've now got a grasp of what optional is all about. There are in fact 17 methods on the optional class, and we've already covered six of the most important. But before we explore a few more of those methods, let's look at a few scenarios where you shouldn't use optional. You've already seen the intended use case for optional, which is returning a value from a method which might be empty. In our enthusiasm, it might be easy to get carried away and use optional in ways that have bad consequences. So here are three things to avoid when using optional. Firstly, it might be tempting to use optional as a method parameter, but thinking through the consequences, it's clear that it's a bad idea. Because when you use optional, your parameter can actually have one of three states. Optional with a value, an empty optional, or null. This means that your method then needs to handle these three states. It would be much better to overload the method, or in other words, write another method with the same name that doesn't take the parameter. Secondly, consider this class to represent a famous guitarist. Although a guitarist will always have a last name, age at death might be null for famous guitarists that are still alive. Yes, there are still a few. Do you think this could be a good use case for optional? Well, this is how the code would look. If we were to implement this solution, we'd have a couple of bad consequences. Firstly, if we ever tried to serialize this class, or in other words, write it to a stream, we could get a not serializable exception because you can't serialize an optional. In a similar way, if we tried to generate JSON from this class, we could get undesirable results because whatever tool we're using is likely going to include the isPresent and is empty methods in the resulting JSON. As an alternative to this, consider just setting the class variable to null 
and instead using the optional.ofNullable method, which can either create an optional with a value or an empty optional. You can then process the optional as you like. Here's an example which shows how the age at death class variable can be processed in a null safe way using ofNullable. The final thing to avoid with optional are three methods that it exposes that we haven't talked about yet get, is present, and is empty. Earlier on, you saw how to use the optional method if present to provide a way to handle a contained value using a fluid API. Another way to achieve the same outcome would be to combine the isPresent method, which returns true if the optional has a value, with the get method, which returns the value contained within the optional or throws a no such element exception if the optional is empty. Here's an example which uses this approach and prints out the same value. But as you can see, we need to explicitly check that is present returns true before calling get to avoid a potential no such element exception. This additional complexity is a reason to avoid using these methods, and the same applies to is empty too. Instead, chain together methods like if present to achieve the same outcome. Now that you've seen how not to use optional, let's whiz through some more examples while exploring the other optional methods. Here are six other use cases for optional, each in a form of a test case so it's easy to understand. And by the way, you can access these tests and run them yourself in the accompanying GitHub repository. The or else get method is similar to or else, which you saw earlier, except this time you can pass a function to calculate a value returned when the optional is empty. And in this example, you can see when the optional is empty, it calls the generate substitute name method instead. And this can be especially useful if your supplier function is slow or consumes unnecessary resources, because or else get makes sure it's only called when necessary. You can call or on an optional, which will either return the entire optional if present, otherwise it will return the supplied optional. So here's an example where we call or on an empty optional, and that means that it calls the function which returns the substitute optional. Why is this useful? Well, consider this example where we're making multiple database calls and then combining the results with or. Using the filter method, an optional which contains a value can be tested to ensure that it meets a given condition. If it does, then the optional is returned. If it doesn't, then the optional is transformed to an empty optional. So here's an example with the Jimi Hendrix guitarist, and we're filtering with a condition to check that the age at death is less than 30. And in this case, that returns the same optional. But if we pass a different guitarist with an age at death greater than 30, you can see that the filter method returns an empty optional. If you'd like to convert a value contained within an optional to another type of object, then call map passing a function. So in this case, we pass a function to map, which takes the Jimi Hendrix guitarist object and gets the name instead, which is a string. Map wraps that inside of another optional, so we end up with an optional of Jimi Hendrix. Flat map is almost the same as map, except this time the function that you pass must return an optional. So in this similar example, we call flat map, but this time the function generates an optional of the guitarist's name. And we end up again with an optional of Jimi Hendrix. And note with flat map that it doesn't wrap the return value of the function in an optional. And the last method to talk about here is pretty interesting. It's all about converting an optional to a stream. And maybe you've used the Java Stream API before, which is a way to process a collection of items in some way in a kind of pipeline. The optional stream method will either generate a stream with one or zero items, depending on whether the optional is empty or not. So in this example, we have a list of optionals, two of which have a value, one of which is empty. Let's say we'd like to change that list so it only contains the optionals which have a value. In that case, we convert the list to a stream, and then we call flat map, which is different from the optional flat map, by the way. And this itself takes a stream, and this is where we use the optional.stream, which for the optionals that contain a value will generate a stream of size one, and for the empty optionals, a stream of size zero. And when that's processed and we call .toList, 
we end up with a list with only the two elements contained within the optional that had a value. And by the way, the optional.stream method wasn't one that I'd used before. And I find it quite hard to come up with an example for this. But if you've used optional.stream before in some other way, then please let me know in the comments down below. Now everything that I know about optional, you know too. Next up, check out these videos right here containing specialist knowledge to help Java developers, just like yourself, to improve your craft. And by the way, it's mandatory watching. It's not optional.